It's funny because I'm just pulled up and I'm a little nervous. <laughs> kind of excited for this. This is so crazy because. Oh, there she is. I mean, happy New Year's. Yeah, happy New Year. I'm good. Getting ready for Grammys. Are you excited? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have some. Um, so I'm going to go to Monterrey, Nuevo León, to pick up some trajes that I made, yeah, like yeah. kind of charro style. And yeah. I mean, we'll see what happens. Grammy nominated. It's kind of crazy. Huh. This is a, what is it? Your second time being nominated, right? It's the second time. Wow. You, but for, the first time was like um, a COVID mm. nomination. So it's like I didn't get yeah. the full experience. And this is going to be really cool because we're going to the main event. And um, I love Trevor Noah. So they just announced he's Yeah, hosting. I know. I know. I know. Thank God I didn't get a uh, Joe Coy. <laughs> <laughs> it was a little awkward, but they were like, like ripping him a new one. Yeah, you know, I think that's where you see the a lot of the producers and stuff like that. They're out of touch of what what a comedian is yeah. and a presenter. Because I think honestly, they're two different things. Like comedians are great when they're scripted; they have something like go off of but they for a comedian who never really hosted such a big event yeah you know and plus they don't know how he is then you know of course it's sound racist and uh but you know like trevor is like a genius mm -hmm. trevor no when it comes to that yeah, yeah like yeah. he's so good like because i i saw something he did it was like a political thing and he was just so smooth and just no I think knowing the people in the room is like and I feel like Hollywood people are kind of stuck up <laughs> stick up their ass <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah it's no. come on. they I don't know they don't want to get joked about and and also like there's a lot of like a lot of kind of tensions oh yeah like just like it's not a good time to be white and rich and all this stuff, right? I mean, especially when you fall on a, on a list of that you visit a certain island. Oh, también, uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's crazy when that list came out. I was like, oh, wow. And some of them was like, yeah, I, I figured. But, but what does that mean, though? Like, that doesn't mean that they were out there doing it. Exactly. With kids, or because, at, like, I, or I, what does it really mean? Like, did, like, what, what other, I mean, they just went there, like, that's it, or? Apparently, that's what the island was was about, but I'm just thinking, thinking of myself because he's, I, I don't know if he's known to throw parties because every time people bring up, like, he's throwing parties there, and he's known, like, a lot of actors, a lot of people in entertainment, political. So he's probably thrown a couple parties out there where he made it so easily for him to send a jet, pick people up, bring them back to the island. Because there's not really an airstrip for bigger planes. So, of course, he had a charter um, planes and stuff like I that. I mean, if, if you didn't know, and then there's this guy, and then he's like, hey, you guys want to... I mean, you'd probably go of course. if you didn't know what was going on. Yeah. So you can't be like, you know... I don't know. Yeah, I, think, you know, I don't know anything. Yeah, no, me neither. <laughs> me neither. I don't know anything. I'm just, you know, I just, I go based by what the news is telling me. But yeah, I was so shocked to be seeing like, wow. That, that whole situation was crazy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, it, and the funny part is that it's, what are the stuff that they're not telling us? Yeah. That's yeah. the part I always gets to because there's always like the part that they hide and the part they're allowed to to mm -hmm. to let everybody know like what's going on because letting shit look at the whole situation with the UFOs. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's another crazy one. Oh yeah, no, that's it's it's insane how like the government is and and what they telling us what to do and everything, especially now that the elections are gonna be coming up. Oh yeah, it's Oof. gonna get crazy, crazier. Yeah, no, it's 
it, it's, it's pretty bad. But, you know, it's nobody's going to be the right person to be sitting on that seat. It's a hard seat to sit on. Very, very, very hard seat to sit on. I mean, even when... So I, I've been doing shows, like, uh, in other states. Mm-hmm. And it's crazy how... I don't know. I, I'm, like, an energy person. And mm-hmm. I feel like even the history of a place will have such a different energy. And it's kind of a trip. And it's like, wow, I can't believe this is, like, where I'm from, too. Because, yeah. mm-hmm. I like, kind of being in my L.A. bubble with so many Latinos and then going to the East Coast, it's kind of like, oh, shoot. Like, yeah, this is different. And you just, it feels weird. The, you talk about like traveling. And I know you've, uh, uh, you work with Carlo Vives uh, on The Voice, right? Yeah, yeah. He was, uh, that was one of the first shows that kind of brought a lot of cool stuff yeah. to me. Because that's how I met my management. But like shows, I'm saying like like touring, like mm. di- different shows. Um, Cause I well doing mariachi, I feel like it's kind of crazy how many Latinos are all over the place and Mexicanos who listen to and come out to these shows. But mm-hmm. but yeah, we've been to like um, Maryland. Um, I don't know different different places where you wouldn't expect and then yeah the history there it feels heavy like yeah it's just different it's different you know where i was really shocked that there was such a huge uh mexican influence mm. was colombia oh when yeah I, when i went to uh, so uh it's oh, like yeah. right here perfect let me turn around it's, yeah yeah um yeah and i was so surprised how big of an influence mexican music was and then uh, the first time i went I saw all these mariachis just walking down Medellin and I was like, wait a minute, like, what's this? And they were telling me like, yeah, they, uh, there's a big population of, what is it called, um, Mexican influence here in, in Medellin. So I was shocked and, I, and it made sense because I started seeing a lot of the artists doing, collabing with like Mexican yeah. style music, you have like Maluma, Carol. Um, yeah. You know, doing the, you know, having mariachis on on their songs and stuff. But, I mean, of course, it comes with great management and, and, and definitely what they uh, um, grew up listening to as well. Yeah. But also, like, where has it been a spot that you've been to to perform where you're like, oh, like, it wasn't it? Have you had that experience yet? Mm. I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> you know what was crazy? I because w- one time, uh, or I think last year, or I don't know what year, but w- I performed at South by, and then I thought that was gonna be weird because it was like at this bar, and I like do like kind of pretty Mexican music. I'm like, who's gonna like this? Yeah. And they like really liked it. So I haven't had like that <laughs> bad, <laughs> like where where it was that bad. I mean, maybe I have. I, I would have to think back. Mm-hmm. But yeah, no, that's uh, I love the fact. And going back to like performing and stuff like that, because the last time I saw you was at a, a party mm-hmm. that we that we both were at. That was fun. And, yeah, that was fun. And I love the our conversation that we had on the way out because. You highlighted something that I was also experiencing that night as well, where people's ego, Hmm. people's uh, thinking they're better than other people. And I was was like, oh, my God, like we were cool at one point. And then all of a sudden you act like nobody knows you. And I'm like, well, all right, cool. How many times have you really experienced that in there? Because I've I've experienced it a handful of times, but but these are people that I, I actually had to work with. I've 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 had a, like almost like a partnership with them, and then all of a sudden like oh, I don't know you, and it's kind of I I hate that. <laughs> <laughs> well, just because I feel like the fakeness of things of anything, mm-hmm. 
And it's okay if you don't vibe with someone. You don't have to be a dick. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. like, it's one thing. Because I, I think you, you do meet so many people in the in the music industry. And, um, and, and you get all these kind of personalities where there's people that think they have to be a certain way. Or, yeah. Or that they are a certain way to get a certain thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there's people that are just cool. But you can, also, one thing I'm kind of realizing is, like, you can't be friends with everybody. Uh. Like, you, you just don't have time to really, like, like be friends. Like, friends, friends. Yeah. Like, you know? And this is sign language for friends, I think. And uh, <laughs> this means uh, I love you in Korean. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and this means poop. <laughs> in sign language. <laughs> and thank you. Yeah, I know that. that. Thank you. But, yeah, you can't be friends with everyone because then you're just going to, I don't know, you have, like, you're just with a different person all the time, mm-hmm. you know, just, it just takes a lot of time to really, like, maintain a friendship Absolutely. and all that. I mean, it's almost like a job, like, just to keep a friendship, like, you know. Yeah, like, yeah. Especially in, like, in the industry we're in, it's like, I, I've seen people make it almost like a full-time job just to keep the relationships with people i was just like and then all of a sudden they go back like oh it was was horrible to work with and this and that but i was like because that person was able to get them through the door get them an interview or get them yeah to something it's like wow you invested a year and a half to get there because of that and i get it maybe because you're struggling this and that but there's other ways that uh i've seen where doesn't pan out and we're doing it for all the wrong reasons and i always think about yeah that's kind of karma kind of kicking you in the ass for it or being uh using somebody for your benefit but again this is how the music industry is is like always using yeah. somebody for it it's it's i think it's an art yeah oh yeah to like keep the keep relationships and like maintain them and and then and then yeah maybe even approaching it as a how can i be of service kind of person absolutely absolutely yeah because i think it's there's a ways there's ways of doing it because sometimes i have that same situation when uh when i'm trying to make time for my friends Mm -hmm. they're busy i'm busy and all of a sudden they're just and i feel like we don't ghost each other but things come up and then he like two or three weeks later like hey matt i apologize this came up i had to take care of it and like I completely understand. Yeah. But there's times where like, oh yeah, sure, yeah, let's hang out. And then you follow up and follow up and follow up and like, oh, you're just a piece of shit. <laughs> and like I try not to take it personal, but it's like I get hurt. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm sitting there like <laughs> pouting and like, damn it. But yeah, no, it's 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 difficult. I mean, it's especially when you're not in the industry or yeah, just getting your foot in the door. It's I get it. Like I, I completely understand how you know you have to almost put up that front to to get where you want to go to so but i try not to do that though like i don't i don't like it yeah it's kind of icky oh, yeah, of but but you know obviously like i think when there is a cool vibe with someone like even when i met you i felt like there was like a cool vibe yeah you know? yeah no and it was funny because that i have to say that and i think i mentioned this to you before when i went to uh to your listening session with your, your new album the moment i walked in to uh the, the sony backlot i love how it felt like i was walking into like an old school movie uh theme where i saw your 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 banners all across and they were all different for each song and i was like damn i felt like i was back in the 1950s that's so cool and i was like Oh my God, I was so impressed. Like, out of all like the listening sessions I've ever been to, that was only the one, actually, the only one that really stood out to me mm. because of the fact that it was so well done. The uh, the movie you, you walked in to the movie theater and you were showing us the your music that going on with the video, you're giving us an explanation about everything. Uh, it really felt that not only you were just presenting your song you're presenting your baby to everybody mm. 
and the meaning, the 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 sensation you had on it mm -hmm. was a different level. You know, I've been. I, I think part of it, like when you do go to these like album releases and listening parties, the venue has to make sense. Because mm -hmm. in the theater, it's like you're going to come, you're going to sit, and you're going to watch, and mm -hmm. you're going to listen. Whereas other places, and you know, you have so many industry people, and people want to talk and mingle. and like. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it was perfect that we had that theater. And I feel like artists should probably like take note. Yeah, Because absolutely. if you want people to really listen, I think the venue is super important. And then, yeah, like we made a whole presentation, and we... We made it in, like kind of interactive mm -hmm. and at the same time like just connecting with people through the song, explaining it. I think when you tell people like, hey, this is something I did and it's important because of this, like they'll listen. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, it's like you, I always talk about always paint a picture Yeah. for somebody yeah. because if you don't paint the picture, you just say, oh, this and this, that. you completely lose A, the audience, B, the feeling and sensation on it and see the overall concept of the project yeah because obviously you the moment you walked in you had the visuals uh the whole walking to the movie theater was completely different and then the third of all the way how you talked about each song how the movie clips too. oh i mean you know what i got uh somewhat emotional when i was looking at those clips because uh my grandma who passed away nine years ago she loved all Pedro's movies mm -hmm. she was a old cuban lady that would love to watch mexican movies mm -hmm. now of course there was there wasn't you know being in los angeles there wasn't nothing else catered to to cubans unless it was like Salvador gigante <laughs> you know <laughs> but uh, because it's done in miami but i remember she would always in the afternoons she, those two hours was dedicated to watching those black and white movies with Pedro and she would actually sing some of her uh, his songs mm. and so I was very uh, uh, there, was a, there, was a, there was a there was a clip that you play where he was uh, his car was mm -hmm. stuck mm -hmm. got, got broken down and I remember that part because I was sitting next to my grandma and she told me this is what real music is this mm. is very this is what romantic music when every word has meaning to it mm. not like the shit that we didn't really do <laughs> <laughs> so yeah and it was, I, <laughs> and so i was like it took me back to to that to that era where i was sitting there and i was like wow i enjoyed every moment of it and the way how you explained it was just so phenomenal thank um, you so i mean great job we, we actually recorded not um visual but audio so we're putting that presentation up just so like so people can you know mm -hmm. go through the album and it's like it's not boring like i just didn't play the whole album through yeah like just just like 30 seconds to a minute of each song and and so that'll be up on youtube at some point oh please Please, I'll um, one more thing. The talking about music. I saw you're in a studio. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I've been going to a friend's studio. Um, he's in Santa Clarita. He has a studio out of his out of his house, um, and we're working on new music, and it has a totally different vibe mm -hmm. than than this previous album and uh, I really like it I really I'm really enjoying the process and actually I'm like producing oh, really yeah so it's this is new right because you're this you're is right yeah so this is brand new and it's just four of us so it's like me Sunny David and George and then we're they're kind of like so they're both musician producers and then I'm kind of like overseeing the production but also putting in my ideas and then you know just coming up with stuff on the spot and also tr trying to create obviously like mariachi is mariachi but mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but it very it's it differs a lot right like um 
you can really hear in, in like I was listening to Adriel Favela and then I was listening to his um, how he's doing his productions I'm like okay I feel like this is like pop but mariachi instrumentation I listen to Nodal and I'm, I'm like okay well I feel like this is like very like like regional like it has like that banda influence because of the trumpets very norteño because mm -hmm. of the accordion and I'm like okay well what do I want my stuff to be right and I'm like I, I still want to like honor the actual like mariachi space like if a mariachi musician that only listens to traditional like not even singers like a lot of groups like Vargas and Sol de Mexico and um camperos like maybe they'll still be able to appreciate the musicality the arrangements the sound mm -hmm. the the mix and like stuff like that and, but making it also like I don't know like in some ways like fresh enough to like um, and I think that has a lot to do with the songs, Absolutely. like just writing really good songs. So, and, and yeah, so I think my next project is kind of, I want it to be more of like a, like a, a, an album you can put on in a social setting and then it like feels good. When, uh, when? should be expecting that? I don't know. I don't even have my, <laughs> I don't have Sony's um, next option optioned out yet. Yeah, 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 <laughs> but, yeah. But I'm already making it because, well, that's what we do, right? Yeah. Like, I just, I can't help myself. I'm just like, I, I want to do it. And um, I have the energy right now, like, and the inspiration. So, like, I got to follow the flow. Mm hmm and um and then yeah i'm gonna start bugging them like uh can i have some money <laughs> huh. so yeah it ain't, it ain't gonna it ain't gonna pay for itself but. i mean yeah but it has to happen either way you know so i'm excited for it though that's awesome with the nomination and everything one thing i've and i and i saw who you go up against and of course you know peso pluma, peso pluma. i feel like he's right now just like the most recognized name because mm -hmm. I, I, even like going in and voting and all that stuff there's categories where you go and you don't know you don't know any of the yeah. artists yep. but then i think people are gonna see that name and like really recognize like uh, all the like pop reggaetoneros people everyone they're gonna see him like oh peso pluma and obviously like course, he's yeah, topping of... charts so yep. It's but a, you never know. You never yeah, know. We'll I, see. Do you think that, let's say, of course, let's say, you know, Peso Pluma gets it. But then let's say it's somebody else. So the somebody else is, is it could be Ana Barbara, Flor de Toloache, Lila Downs, mm -hmm. or myself. So four females, mm -hmm. which I think is kind of like a new president of how Absolutely. many females have been nominated. And then Peso Pluma. Yeah. Do you think that, let's say... If Peso Pluma doesn't win, but somebody else wins, have do you think that it's political, not voting? Oh well, it's for sure it's political. Of course, but I mean, because like, like, everyone's campaigning. Yeah, like including myself, but but also when when I'm campaigning, I feel like like listen to the music. Mm -hmm. What speaks to you, like? It's all so diverse. Everything is so different. And then, so I think Lila Downs is the only one that isn't like a, a lot of like mariachi sounds. And then everybody else had a, a good amount of mariachi stuff. Um, but it's all very different, even if it's all mariachi. And then Peso Pluma is like really, really different. Yeah. And, and I mean, even sonically, like even if I don't agree like in a ethical moral yeah you know type of mm -hmm. thing with the lyrics and i'm like who cares about why are we you know praising this kind of lifestyle it's not my thing personally mm -hmm. um but um it's there's undeniable an undeniable like energy and sound and like you know like mm -hmm. something that it's different and it's completely different from what everybody else's music is yeah like in that category yeah y yeah because i mean you guys is like everybody else is like doing like mariachi music and they only maybe has i mean one you know i'm surprised karin leon didn't get like nominated because that was a really good album mm -hmm. 
I feel like what happened to the political stuff. Yeah, no, and that's the thing. You start seeing that because it's like I've seen artists like for instance, and I think Land Grammy is one of those things where it's almost 98% political when it talks about the voting. And I think, again, and this is probably going off topic, but I think a lot of the voters or the people that are sitting on those, on, the, on those panels are too old. I think there's a lot of old people that don't really understand them because how does Ricky Martin get nominated and gets winning four or five awards for not even putting out a, an album in like in a few years? And it's happened before. Yeah. And it's like, why are you doing that? But then again, you know, you've, you've had Bad Bunny being missed uh, because it was going against another older artist. Mm-hmm. And I think... Because, like you said, it's the name that it's, really yeah, stands out. Yeah, it's the the name recognition, but it it's it's hard to. I mean, unless you're like you know back there and like can really break mm-hmm. down the demographics and who's voting, who's not, and all this stuff. But yeah, you just I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I told all my friends to listen to my album and. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I've, I've been, I've been, I've been listening to it for the last couple of days, and I was just like, because I, I, I listen back to it, and there's just times like, in what mood I'm in, where, when I'm like having a stressful day, I go straight to like EDM music, but when I'm like, I need just, I mean, like in a calm, then I'll listen to, like, your your album, and I'll go visit like even to Peso Pluma, just kind of listen to them, then I'll go back to, uh, reggaeton, or then I go to pop. What kind of pop? Like Latin pop? I would do Latin pop, but mostly I do like the Backstreet Boys. In no C- way. Yeah. yeah. I started in the radio when uh, Terrestrial Radio, Kiss FM, Los mm-hmm. Angeles in 2000. Mm-hmm. When every boy band was at its peak. Mm. And so I, and my sister at the time was like only like, eight nine years old and so her thing was in sync loved in sync and when i was able to get tickets to the concert i was able to give it to her but um i was that was my my era to see like you see this this latino kid who looks like who should be working in a hip-hop world Mm. i fell in love with with the pop world and that's actually my background was english pop music that had to do with the backstreet boys in sync 98 degrees um, you know, Britney Spears, Christina Aguilar. I mean, that that era was that was mine, and I I know that like back of my hand because I lived through that. That was a fun era. It really was. It was and, a really like, really fun era. Eminem even talking <sighs> crap about Christina and all that. It, it was so cr- it was so different. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I feel like uh, it's so, it's so different now. Yeah, and to see how or everybody's life has. Almost, I, I feel like back then it was just like your pop stars, but now I, I feel like the world is like so big now mm-hmm. as far as like so many, like there's so many artists and like everyone has like a million, you know, millions of followers and like, but they're still niche and it's mm-hmm. kind of crazy. I don't know. Do you feel that way too? Or you has know, it always been that way? But no, no, it's, it's, I think we're, when they, when an artist kind of starts like back in, let's say, 2000s, it was about making music. How do you, you have the marketing, how do I market this this artist? Um, what do they look? Each one, what does, who do they represent? So, of course, it goes back to like what I consider what, what was the original K-pop, mm. where, you know, each one is, you know, mm. uh, catering to certain demographic. Mm-hmm. Um, nowadays, I just think that because of social media, now you become a social media artist. And now when you go to uh, into like a record label or management, the first thing they ask, not the music. They don't ask for the music. They don't ask anything about them. The only thing they ask is like, how many followers do they have? And I was like, oh. And then they're like, all right, let's let's listen to them. Then they go through look through social media. After they're like, oh, well, they do this. Then they go and listen, take time. If it isn't there, the numbers aren't there. They're like, oh. I don't want to do it. And it sucks because yeah. it's there are talented kids that are out there. But yeah. because of the fact that nowadays they're only look at numbers. And then even in the charts, they, the 
a lot of platforms are only they now they have like the TikTok charts. Okay, what about what do you think about influencers turned like artists, like musician or music artists? Perfect example. There was uh, the girl named Bella Porch who was known to do these these facial um, uh, videos and millions and millions of views. So a these TikTok producers um, hit her up and said, "Hey, let's do a song." The song actually was really good. Mm-hmm. It did crazy amount of views. The second song came out, same amount. But when it was time for her to perform, she couldn't bring anybody in. Hmm. Like, she was great visually. She was great on putting the stuff out. But if she performed at a coffee shop, maybe she will be able to bring in that amount of people. I guess, I guess it, it matter. Maybe, maybe we're looking at it like, oh, yeah, th- those views are going to translate to people showing up and buying concert tickets. But it's like that's that's like a more of like a visual like online market versus mm-hmm. like a physical market because yeah. i am think even thinking about shows it's like no you have to go to that market and you have to like work it and make shows there and do radio there mm-hmm. and, yeah uh, i mean there's a, there's a big uh uh like promo and and talk about it. it's like nowadays it's like you have these these influencers just doing it online that's and crazy and now why because, don't they show up like you know, because it's it's different. Because I, I think this new generation is completely different from, you know, what we were uh, grew up listening to. But uh, they like, I, isolated or something. Uh, you know what? I think they rather watch it on their phones. Hmm. But also, is I a couple oh well, last month I went to like this TikTok festival. I swear to God. Everybody that was there wanted to be influencers. Like everybody. <laughs> everybody. Like everybody was doing content. And I'm like, hey, why don't you guys enjoy the show? Nope. It was content, content, content. And I'm like, wow, you guys are not eating. And the fact that what, bog- what blows my mind is that, and I, and, and, and I do this as well, but people don't watch concerts anymore. They, had their phone oh yeah watching the concert i, I think phone. that's so dumb i know <laughs> i know for me it's like all right if there's a song that 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 they're, they're gonna perform i'll probably do a little bit then stop yeah, it yeah, yeah, and yeah, i'm yeah, like yeah. i want to watch it because like, they're watching it they're not even watching the person they're watching it just on their phone as they're filming yeah i know and it's like you could just like you know like swatch the thing that that but maybe there maybe there's like something in their mind where like oh I'm gonna catch something that's gonna happen that's gonna go viral or something like that. Everybody's you know? looking for that 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 one little video so that it's gonna go viral. Uh, but yeah, this music nowadays is, is very very different, especially the, even the industry as well. It's turning into an episode of Black Mirror. I know. <laughs> I know. I know. It's you know it's funny. I haven't deep dived in either. I've only seen a couple episodes of it. And there was one, which one was the one that, uh, it was, you, you lived your life by likes. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I saw that one. And I was like, oh, my God. And I was thinking to myself, oh, that's so stupid. I'm, and I started thinking about, like, oh, my God, this is actually happening. Yeah. Like, little by little. Yeah. yeah. Like, it's almost ridiculous what you see, but then, then you start to see the parallels and you're like, oh, shit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Para allá vamos. I know. Well, let's go get some pancakes. Okay. One thing I've noticed that with the with the AI is like everything. You're gonna hate it because it's not your not you. <laughs> Second of all, it's also um, you're not gonna be making any money, which is another thing. But like you said, you could actually do a song mm-hmm. with your grandfather. Mm-hmm. Because I think in in the music, there's there's two ways of handling this. One, you could be against it, or two, adapt to it. Yeah. And I think we're at, at a stage where. Yeah, you have to adapt to <clears throat> probably 
anything. Oh, here's water, by the way, if you want to. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah. Because then it, it I'm, sh I, like, I know that there's benefits, you know, but you don't want to be like what happened with all the record labels and not adapting to like the whole change in the industry and like with the LimeWire and the Spotify thing. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's going to come whether you like it or not, no? Absolutely. It's like, it's, 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 it's going to come. And again, it's a, it comes down to the <laughs> fact that, um, I think, again, there's benefits from it. And I do know like a lot of record labels are investing money into the AI stuff. Um, to try to take ownership of of some of the, the I guess their artists mm -hmm. yeah um, but I think and, and this is something where I was talking to a guy who is did K-pop for from the very beginning K-pop was definitely uh, built by by science Literally, mm -hmm. and because what they started doing is that they start getting like all their analytics, like everything was being tracked. Why did the girls like like them? Why the certain songs? Why are they attracted to them? And they built them by design. So what they did is like okay, took every little aspect of what they wanted and created these boy bands, these groups, and so they became huge stars because it was literally built by design um i think that's why they, they're, they're doing so well but again k-pop has been around for like god since i was in high school really mm -hmm. it just never it didn't blow up to mm -hmm. the general market till i think it was the last five years five or six years mm -hmm. but it was probably big over there no? mm -hmm. the thing is they didn't need the the u.s market yeah. They just never they, they never needed it because they make so much money going on tour in just Asia. I mean, they sell out um, what is it called uh, uh, coliseums. I mean, their 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 the concerts are massive out there. But growing up in Pasadena and uh, you know having San Marino and Arcadia around. I will always go to Arcadia and there's always like in a shopping center mm -hmm. and every time you walk by them they always have these little groups these little Asian groups and I was like what the fuck is this like they're all little models and all this stuff and <laughs> they all look cute but I mean I was until like I said the last few years they blew up yeah so I think that's you know where, with AI it, you're able to mimic that and build from that and really just kind of um, give what the audience want. Yeah. From the audience. And plus, if you wanted to do, a, do an album every other week, you can do that. That's crazy. Yeah. That's really crazy. Yeah. And again, you don't need, you don't even need like a full-on studio or anything like that. You just, it's all done from a laptop. Yes, but... I mean, well, thinking even about my genre where it's all like acoustic instruments, mm -hmm. it's like you you can't really get that. That's true. For reals. Yeah, there's no, there's nothing like having it. Like you're not gonna go llevar una serenata with your freaking AI laptop. <laughs> like they have to make some really high tech robots to come and yeah play for you. I mean, they're not that far from there. That's the thing. Yeah. You're not that far from there, but, <clears throat> but yeah, no, it's 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 crazy how the music is changing. I think in like 50 years, we should do um, like a solo Sunday part two. In 50 years? Yeah. Ha! And then we'll like, you know, circle back on these uh, these conversations. Yeah. I mean, listen, <laughs> I probably won't be around in the next 50 years. Yeah, you will. Oh no, 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 no. I got probably a solid 10, 10, 10 years, 10, 15 max. We'll just do that. Before I, uh, I get oh, too I, old. Okay, well, yeah, I think you're right. Cause I think I'd be like pushing 90. Yeah. Oh so, yeah. So, okay. So maybe like 40, 45 years. 
It'd be cool to do a, a solo Sunday and like in your eighties and your late yeah. <laughs> show. <laughs> what type of music? Oh, you're, what type of music you're listening to? <laughs> you know what's funny? Um, there was a uh, this artist that came by, and she gave me her CD. And she said, "Hey, you're listening to my CD," and I'm like, "This is probably about five years ago." Okay. I was like, "Really? Yeah." Who did that? <laughs> and I looked at the CD and I looked at my phone and I told her how to how, how do I put the CD into my phone and that moment she it like clicked her it's like oh okay and I was like yeah it's not um, what is it called uh, like we live in a, in a di- yeah. digital world it's crazy it is crazy. I love your street. It reminds me like the at the end of uh, uh, Back to the Future. <laughs> <laughs> but before everything is done for today, and we'll definitely do uh, another solo Sunday about forty years from now. Yeah. Hopefully. Or maybe before that. Yeah, let's, I think we should do a couple before <laughs> yeah. that. Um. What was the one album yeah. that your mom would listen to when she's cleaning the house on Saturday or Sunday morning? She never cleaned the house. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> she's probably going to get mad at that. You know, she listened to a lot of Lupita D'Alessio. Okay. Um, I remember her. Are you familiar with her? I'm not, like, no. like, um, she's kind of like the Latin version of Madonna. Oh, well, not really, but like, but, but like really big, like ballads and like very, because my mom's was like a single mom. Mm-hmm. So I feel like Lupita D'Alessio had like this, like. Kind of like even before, like so before Jenny Rivera like had all of those songs about like, you know, woman empowerment. Mm-hmm. Like I feel like Lupita D'Alessio, cause she had a crazy, really crazy life, and um, and she has these songs about like mentiras, tú me das el... <laughs> and then she so she's like talking about like what all these have men have done and calling them out. So she listened to a lot of that. <laughs> That's cool. Like Juan Gabriel. Oh yeah, Juan Gabriel. And then I don't. I remember the song "Sopa de Caracol." Oh, hey, what am I going to? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was that was actually my my household. That, that those are the type of songs where it was always salsa. It was always um, was it uh, Gloria Stefan, mm. uh, Mi Tierra, mm-hmm. uh, Juan Luis Guerra. Mm. I like him. Yeah, he's I, so good. I was working on a radio station and uh, this guy said, hey, I want you to meet somebody. I opened the door and I see a seven foot ten <laughs> man and I'm like, oh, it's Juan Luis Guerra. I was like, oh my God. Like it, it was, I was so blown away and how nice he was, how soft spoken he was. But like I told him like, man, I grew up listening to you. And I, until I got older, I didn't know all your music was about fucking. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, all right. And he just starts laughing, but he was just a genuinely nice person. He's, yeah. I mean, I don't know him, but his music is awesome. Like, not t- too long ago, he put out a song with this artist named Nella. Mm-hmm. And um, it's one of my favorite songs. I think it's called Mi Guitarra. Mm-hmm. It's so good and it's so pretty and and it, it's just nice. Yeah. It's like one of those songs that just like takes me to a different. Oh, I love that. I love those type of songs where you just sit back and it just it just you go on like an emotional ride to that location. Yeah, I love that. But yeah, but Lupita, thank you so much for making yeah, time for this me is and fun. and doing this little solo Sunday. Uh, uh, podcast first guest ever so this is legendary <laughs> so we'll uh we'll definitely recap and hopefully put all the good stuff 
Absolutely. Del- yeah. Delete all the bad stuff. Oh no, that's all staying in. That's all staying in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, even the bloopers and everything. We're, we'll, we'll we'll leave it all in there. But um. Oh, what'd you think of the breakfast? The breakfast was really good. The pancake. I was when you told me like, hey, I know this perfect pancake spot. I mean, listen, you sold me at pancake, <laughs> sold me the, um, but the pancake was so good because it had like a little crunch to it when you, oh, it's like soft, but crunchy, but salty, but sweet, but yeah, it's pretty good. It was good. It was good. I enjoyed it. Me too. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, we'll, we'll do it again. Yeah. We'll try a different place. Yeah. Well, we'll put like a, a list of places we should go hit for okay. pancakes. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, pancake tour. What do we pancake or we gonna do uh, like a foodie tour? I like I like the like let's find the best pancakes. All right, let's do that. That'll be the the niche. Okay. Okay. Um, also, with the next time you're in Pasadena, mm-hmm. uh, let me know because somebody told me that you love sugarfish as much as I do. Mm-mm. Okay. Do you like sugarfish? Uh, I think I only been there once. Oh. You don't like it? Well, it's sushi, right? Yeah. I, I, I don't think I had it, like, enough where I'm like, oh, I want to go to Sugarfish. Oh. Do you like sushi? Yeah, I, I like sushi. Oh, okay. I like, I like sushi, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's literally one of my favorite places to go to eat sushi. Yeah? Yeah. I've, I've been to, like, the Nobus and all that stuff. You know what? Maybe we didn't. We so I think we went to to the sugar fish, and it was too crowded. Yeah, that sounds about right. And then and then we couldn't eat there, <sighs> so we had to go to like CPK or something. <laughs> Another good option. I'm not mad at it. But um, yeah. So uh, maybe we should try that next time. Say less. Let's yeah. do that. Okay. Lupita, thank you so much. Yeah. I really appreciate it, yeah. and hopefully we we'll do this again. Yeah.